Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in to the show today, Super Agents Live. Now, listen, I got a lot of catching up to do. Um, If you've been following the show, we're making some changes. Uh, Well, first, let me tell you what today's episode's about. You know that I have super top producing people on here. I have people on here that do $100 million, $150 million in transactions. Now, I've realized... I've realized that the magic for you guys is this. I'm really looking for people that do at least 30 million bucks, somewhere along that, and have been in the business for less than seven years. Now, I've, you know, I can have somebody that's been in the, the industry for 40 years and they come here and they're like, yeah, Toby, you know, I put up $100 million every year and it's all from referrals. Well, that's great. Well, that's not helping you guys, right? You guys, most of you guys are out there aspiring. You guys are doing maybe 10, 15, 20 transactions annually. This show, I want to help you get up there. I want to help you put $30 million on the board. So I've kind of figured that out along the way that, you know, if you're doing at least $30 million in less than seven years, you have some good stuff to drop. Now, it doesn't mean those other people don't. I mean, everything that you hear on the show is valuable. Today's episode is different, is different. This guy, today's guest is is, is a baby in the industry. This guy's been at it for six months, but, but. Why did I have him on the show? Because of this. He, he's been in the industry. He's been selling real estate full-time for six months. That's nothing. But he has figured out from listening to this show and implementing the, the, the sound advice, this guy is putting up eight to ten listings every month. He's been in there six months. This guy's been doing this. He quit a six-figure job. He's making about 100 grand a year, was not happy, quit it wanted time freedom, wanted financial freedom, and moved into real estate. So we talk about, we talk about really how he did it. Six months old, guys. If this guy can do it, anybody can do it. Now, look, I mean, mean, he's a smart guy. But look, all of you guys, if you guys are aspiring, if you want to be successful and you're not seeing success, it's out there. This guy is in a small market. And again, he's still putting up eight to ten listings a month. His strategy he, uh, what he talks about on the show is he is all about prospecting. Now, you know, real estate is all about lead generation. That's what this business is. It's the business of lead generation. Generate the lead, close it. Boom. You're not going to get everyone, but the more leads you generate, the more deals you're going to put on the board. So I'm excited for you guys to hear this and hopefully it will give, you know, if somebody's out there struggling, uh, it will give you a little, uh, a kick in the, in the backside and get going a little bit more. Now, um, the changes we're making to the show. Now, if you're new to the show, welcome. Uh, there's a hashtag for the show. Uh, the hashtag is unpack that idea. Use that. It's a big follow train. I'll follow you. Join our tribe on Twitter. Uh, the other thing too is, uh, if you're a top producing agent out there, uh, we're going to be going live with our radio thing. We are going to be putting people on the radio and I'll tell you what, man, radio is magical. I've not started releasing our radio interviews. It's it's uh, me, it was a lot a lot of a lot of those interviews about me getting intel on how it works and blah blah blah. So they're actually a little bit disjointed. So but I but I'm gonna release them because I want to show once I once I launch our radio stuff and and I'm putting people on the radio and making them rich. Uh, I'm gonna start releasing those. So um so we did the hashtag we did the radio. Uh oh, very important. Now look. <clears throat> Our programming, we have been Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's been the show. Now, I haven't released anything this week. I spent the last six days on the road from San Diego doing a road trip with my two oldest kids. Road, road tripped it from San Diego all the way up to the Oregon border. Uh, six days, we've been jamming, and I put on the car 1,997 miles. We went up to the Redwoods. It was a fantastic. We went salmon fishing. I landed two 20-pound salmon. Um, well, one was like 22, the biggest fish I ever caught. It was fantastic. All right, so our program has been Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're changing it to the summer schedule, right? I mean, TV does this. TV doesn't, TV takes all their good stuff off the air in, in the summertime because you guys are out on the beach, you're playing, you're having fun, they're long days, and you're not what you're not tuning in to, to this content. I don't want the, all my stuff, all this great content we're putting up to go to waste. So we are getting on our summer schedule. 
it is going to be Tuesdays and Fridays. And may and, and look, we're, I'm also doing a live hangout, you know, every third Thursday at at 10 a.m. Uh, live Google Hangout. So, so, and maybe I'll throw up some bonus stuff in the middle. But just be prepared. I know a lot of people really rely on this show. It's only going to be Tuesday and Fridays. Okay, hey, let's get to it, Mike Wall. Hey, Mike, thanks for taking the time out today. Look, I've given the the audience a brief overview of your background, but take a minute, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Well, Toby, thank you so much, and uh, I really appreciate what you do, uh, not only for real estate agents, but the uh, industry at large. So thank you so much. Hey, no um, As you know, as you know, uh, I, my name is Mike Wall. I actually work in a very small marketplace, uh, Dayton, Ohio. Um, I've actually only been full-time in the real estate for about six months now uh, and have enjoyed some success early on here, uh, attributed mostly to, to shows like yours and, and uh, Pat Hyben and, and, and some of the other things that are, uh, are available to, uh, to agents out there. But, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's been really a, a roller coaster here um, you know, I quit a job uh, making uh, about a hundred grand a year, uh, which, by Midwest standards, is 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 really a it, it's a comfortable living. Uh, but I, I have to tell you, I was just completely miserable with what I did. Uh, I was doing some consulting for a technology company, had been for about four years, and uh, was just not happy. Uh, it was not not the life for me. So you know, I had to uh, make a decision, and and uh, you know, I quit that job and, and went full bore into real estate and. And uh, have really had some success, just really hit the ground running. And, and you know, um, basically the foundation of what I did was I started on uh, FISBOs and expireds. And I know, you know, you've heard the cliche, but that's really the foundation of my business is, is prospecting. And um, I always thought, and I've listened to your show for a while, but I always thought it would be a great idea to talk to real estate agents about bridging the gap between success and mediocrity because you talk to so many agents who are so super successful, but maybe they've been there for a while, you know, maybe they've been successful for 15 years and you really kind of forget some of the minutia, uh, if you will, for what got you there. And I thought, you know, I'm right in the middle of this right now. A lot of the mistakes that I'm making are truly fresh. So I can provide that content or that valuable, uh, those valuable lessons back to those real estate agents who are truly committed in to becoming successful in real estate. Yeah, so so interesting. Consultant uh, to real estate. Um, uh, I would imagine, I mean, so how long were you a consultant, Mike? I did that for four years. Okay, four years. Um, and were you with a, how big of a firm were you with? Uh, I was with probably a, a $50 million company who is, who is uh, locally based out of Cincinnati. Uh, and they do have an office here in Dayton uh, as well as Columbus. So it's not a it's not a national company, but it is a regional company that's fairly large. Got it. Okay. So I mean, look, being a consultant, they're all, it's all about systems. It's all about breaking it down uh, and to to come up with you know a, a direction for the new product or initiative or or whatever. I imagine you took that same kind of systems and applied it to this business. You're absolutely right, and, and I learned some great lessons in that industry, uh, but the foundations are truly the same. Everything is really prospecting-based if you want new clients, because to get in front of new clients or to get paid, if you will, you have to be in front of new clients, and you have to be developing business, because if you're not providing value to new clients, you know, what are you doing? You're not making any money. Right, right. No, so look, I, I, I would, I, and, and you know, as a consultant, and I know many, many consultants, and, you know, and they, you know, they're they're very thorough people. I could never be a consultant. You know, I went to UCSD, <laughs> and and everybody. That was the thing, right? You know, you come out of Stanford, you know, HBS, whatever, and um, and you know, that's that's where people land, right? Is 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 uh, eighty hours a week uh, being a consultant. Um, so so I imagine you did right. So it's all about prospecting, right? That's what you said. Sure, but. I imagine you did the homework, right? You did the research on on where is the low hanging fruit, right? There's lots of different prospecting methods. You know, in that research, what did you discover? You know, that's a great question. I think what I discovered in that research is the fact that don't go out and try and develop new ideas. People have gone before you. Take those 
ideas that you're perceiving in your head as being hard and just implement them. Go out and fail forward. Go out and, and get in front of people. Um, pick up the phone. That's really what it's all about. And, and, and I know it's cliche because I've listened to the show before and I've listened to other shows. But, you know, if, if I can just, if there's any way that I can put an exclamation point on that, it, it is truly the foundation of my business. It is how I'm taking, you know, between eight and ten listings every month now. And I'm only six months into the business. Holy smokes. Holy smokes, man. Uh, that is fast. So, 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 uh, okay. Okay. Did you have, so you, so you were your last job as a consultant. Okay. You had a database. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, what if you, I mean, I, I, those eight to 10 listings are from that database. Yes. Most of them are, or are they not? Uh, they are not. Uh, not. and if you really want my secret, yeah. if you want to know what I did, don't make me pay I, for the it. first thing I did, the first thing I did when I got into real estate was I, I, I hired a company called Red X. Um, most of you uh, uh, have heard of that company. And what they do is they provide FISBO and expired leads. And every single morning, I time block between 8 and 10. That is an appointment for me. So that is more important, more important than any other appointment that I'm on throughout the day because that's what gets me on appointments. So between 8 and 10 every morning, religiously, I would not take any interruptions sit there at my desk and dial, dial, dial. I would take expireds from three years back once I ran out of the new expireds and just continue to dial. And what that did, Toby, is build up a database. So I would get in touch with people who say, you know, I'm not interested in listing right now. You know, we're ready to do something uh, in the spring or the first of the summer. Call me back. Well, I'd put that into my CRM and, and continue to follow up with maybe a drip email and then call them, you know, two weeks prior to what they said they would list me list at and say, hey, you know, are you thinking about listing? I know we talked back in, you know, in February and you said, well, this might be the time for us. And then it was just, it, it, it was like a snowball effect. It continued to build upon itself. And, you know, I'd have, I'd be on, you know, 10, 15 listing appointments a week. And we were taking, um, gosh, I was taking, honestly, 80% of those. And it, 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 is, it is not that way in every market, so I don't expect most people to, to get that same result because I believe that in my marketplace that real estate agents, uh, they're, they're just not doing what it takes to be successful. And so it's, I'm in a marketplace where maybe it's a little bit easier for me to be successful because I'll get out and do the work. Yeah, okay. Um, so what about this, though? So there's, there's, you have some, you're a smart guy. Right. You're you're a well spoken guy. You're a very smart guy. A lot of people, right? I'm really sad to say that are out there selling real estate are not that smart. You know, is it that you are just outgunning these people? Eighty percent, I mean, you're you're not only getting the appointments, right? You're ten to fifteen a week, but then you're knocking down eighty percent of them. Like correct. Right. I mean, so that's that's an that's that ratio is very, very high. Um how? I mean, again, are you just outgunning them? You're coming in just with more ammo because, again, you're smart, you're educated, and you're not, uh, uh, you know, you have zero fear in getting in front of these people. That's the difference. It's because I'm not afraid to fail. And I'm not afraid to fail because of shows like yours and because I do the homework. See, what I believe is education creates confidence. So I, I take what I get from shows like Super Agents, uh, from reading, from like Chris Smith, Water Cooler, those guys do a great show, uh, and, and Pat Hive, and you can name really any of them. And, and I try to implement that stuff because I don't know what the disconnect is between most real estate agents and, and then hearing something like that, why they don't believe it doesn't work. Um, and, you know, they really get lost in, in trying to plan out there whatever they're going to do. But the reality of it is that's all I've done. I haven't done anything, anything special. I've just taken what's been given through shows like yours and implemented it in my own business. And I'm not afraid to fail because by failure, you're cre actually creating more opportunity for yourself to learn and, and get better. And that's what I've based my business on. Yeah. Well, look, and, and by the way, we, don't lump my show in with those other shows, right? This is the, the this is the <laughs> best show. Uh, the, those other guys are, you know, I mean, they're copycats, dude. 
I had, I had Pat, without question. <laughs> um, so, uh, okay. So you, you, you learned what you needed to do. And, and number one, you take action. Now, now look, taking action, doing the work is something we all know that we need to do, but that's something, dude, you know, Mike, that most people, most people want to sit behind their computer screen, keep planning. And, uh, and, and that's the action they want to take instead of putting themselves out there. Why do you think that the, what is the barrier? What what stops people from taking action? What stops people? Is it is well? I won't, I don't. I'll, I'll leave it there. Well, I think a lot of people. Um, and, and by the way, that's that that is truly the difference between somebody who is successful and somebody who is mediocre. Yep. Um, is action. So the reality of it is, most people are are fear a fear of failure. It is because they have a it is they have a fear of failure because. They have a lack of confidence. They have a lack of confidence because they're not educated. So they don't know what to say or they think they don't know what to say. Yeah. And, you know, really that's just about teaching yourself what to say. And the way to do that really is, is, is you know, you look at expired scripts. I've got a Mike Ferry script sitting here as my mouse pad right now. I mean, that's, that's, that, was the, that was the foundation of what I used. Uh, and then, you know, you articulate that and, and you get better and you improve upon that based on who your audience is and you just get better. If you're not willing to fail, though, you're not willing to be successful. And that's just the bottom line. Yeah, I know, look, I agree. I, I 100% agree, man. You know, because, you know, through failing, you know, you can go back, especially you as a consultant, you can go, hey, that failed. Let me go ahead and do an autopsy in that, right? What what could I have done differently or, you know, what was it there? Um so what about this? So again, right, I'm a little bit fascinated with this, this research piece of it. Um, you, uh, so you landed on Red X. Now, a competitor Red X is Land Voice Data, which we have a deal with. And uh, sure. so did, did you, in terms of picking Red X, I mean, how much work did you do? Say, was it Land Voice or Red X or I don't know who else is out there? <laughs> I actually got, and, and it, see, these ideas, they come to me through, through shows like yours. Uh, people throw different pieces of technology out, and I'll do the research, and then if it looks like something that, that has a good ROI, I'll implement it right away. I don't take any time. Um, you know, I've done the same thing with some different programs, and we can talk about that in a minute. But it's really about, you know, how quick are you willing to make a decision? See, so many people get lost in the cost of that program, yeah. and that is truly the wrong mindset to have because if you're looking at it just at cost, then – you're failing to see the true picture of what it can provide, what it can do for you and your business to grow and get better and, and to implement more stuff. I agree. I agree. I, I don't know. Look, I don't, and especially in this industry, real estate agents are notoriously cheap. You know, it's um, it's and it's amazing that, you know, you, look, and this is a this and this, you know, look, this show is really about entrepreneurship, but it's about entrepreneurship through the lens of. Of a, of a real estate agent. And, and if, it, yeah. if you ask any agent out there, anybody, I can ask my kids, can you start, does it take money to start a business? Yes, it takes money. You've all heard that it takes money to make money. But yet, you know, agents out there starting out or, you know, people have been out there, there's been struggling for, you know, three years or four years. They're unwilling to invest in their business or in themselves. Sure. Um, totally true. That is totally true. And, and you know, just to piggyback on that, uh, I did, I tried the whole thing where we went into the MLS, I scrubbed the data for the expired listings and buddy, I mean, you tell, tell you what, that's just, that's a lot of work to do every single day, day in and day out. And, and basically it's another way of looking at it with regard to how much are you worth right. like, personally, you know, yep. are you worth uh, more of the time than it takes to, to sit down and, and pull up all the expired listings and then scrub them for all the data, the numbers. Uh, whatever type of information you can get. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, we talk again, you know, if you've listened to the show, I mean, you know, should you be cleaning your house? Should you be washing your car? Right. I mean, those are those in reality, if you know, <laughs> if you're a successful person that it, that the, the ROI does not make sense on doing that work, you know, pay somebody else and you go do what you do best. So, so for sure. you, for you, Mike, look, you, I'm on your website right now. 
It's amazing. So you were doing something. I actually just had a conversation with somebody about. So uh, and uh, uh, you are targeting, uh, or at least you're you're a little bit marketing to. Uh, it looks like there's some uh, some uh, military bases bases near you. Uh, really, mm-hmm. and here's what it says. I'm reading it right now. Relo- relocating to uh, Patterson Air Force Base. I can make your military relocation stress free. Let me send you a relocation package. Um, how did you How did you come up with this idea of of marketing to uh, the, these bases? Um, wh- what I tried to do with that page uh, is so you're on findateinohiohomes.com, right? Yep. That's where you're at. Yep. Um, we have such our, our city here is so predicated on 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 the military and and relocation that I knew I wanted to, to try and gain a piece of that market. And I've done some really cool stuff on Facebook too. Uh, I had mentioned in a note to you about creating ghost pages because a lot of agents I think today are so caught up in, you know, generating buyers off, uh, you know, this and that or generating home value leads on Facebook. I know that's a big thing right now. And, and, yeah. and, and the reality of it is it is a really good thing just so you know, we can talk about that in a minute, but um, so what I've done now is I create these, what I call ghost pages. So I have one, it's called Wright Patterson Air Force Base Lifestyle. So it, wait, it is wait, wait, wait. totally say, devoted. Mike, say that again. I want to look at it. What is it? Uh, you go, if you're on Facebook, it's called Wright Patterson Air Force Base Lifestyle. And I know that's a mouthful, but uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. And, and what that page is, is, is basically it is, it is a it is a value page, so it is giving value to folks in and around or who are being being relocated into uh, the base. Um, and and what it has at the top is a link to my tiger site. So I've got and it's very subtle. It's just you can pin an ad to the top of the site, but everything else, if you look through the content on that site, is about pro- providing value. So it might be, you know, what are the fireworks show times? What's going on at the base? I can tell you a little bit about uh, base housing. If, if you if you want to come immediately into base housing, um, entertainment, restaurants, everything. But what that does to the consumer is it, it draws everybody in through every different avenue. And I I actually I went in and I scrubbed all the lists lists for uh, the Air Force bases throughout the country, um, in the U.S. and abroad, and I advertised just to that demographic. So if you have an Air Force Base job, you're getting my Facebook advertisement so that I can ensure you when somebody is relocating to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, they're seeing my ad over and over and over in their newsfeed. And so I'm drawing people in through that to get them to come to my Tiger side and capturing them at the Tiger side and then, you know, obviously selling them a home. Right. Um, okay. So look, and, and, and by the way, I mean, not everybody knows how to do this. Not everybody knows how to, you know, I've been thinking about creating a whole Facebook, you know, product because not everybody knows how to use Facebook in general good. Um, but in terms of, you know, using Facebook ads, that's, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's, un, uh, that's foreign to most people. Um, t- talk about that a little bit. Talk about, you know, uh, uh, what is that? Yeah. Walk us through that process as well as the budget sure. that you're using. Well, just first of all, think about how powerful that actually is. I can, I can, I can advertise in the Dayton Daily News. Um, I can spend, you know, three hundred dollars, and the house I advertise it might get seen by the buyer that buys it, but it might not. You know, in Facebook, I can actually pick people who are in the Air Force. I can pick the zip code that the Air Force base is in, and I can actually model that site or advertise that site to those people and just those people so that at some point, you know, not everybody's moving to Wright Patterson Air Force Base, but there's a much larger chance of me finding that person that is relocating to Wright Patterson Air Force Base than just, you know, putting an ad in the paper or whatever. Right. But, um, yeah, the, the process is, is, is not hard. Um, it is very easy actually. Um, I'm not, I'm not, you know, a, a technical guru. I do know some stuff about uh, Facebook, and I'm basically self-taught or at least uh, YouTube video taught. But uh, what I'll do, and, and, you know, you can go in and create a Facebook page for free. Hope, hopefully most of your listeners know that. Um, but I went in and created this page, um, gave the information, and what I've done is just basically 
and you, you know, you can see at the top there what it says. It, it basically says that this is a resource for, um, for people who are, are connected to or looking for schools, entertainment events, housing, local restaurants, anything to do with our area here in Dayton that might be, you know, associated with wright Patterson Air Force Base. Right. And I put a nice little cute picture there up top with a base family and a baby, uh, which, you know, gets good feedback. So all of that was free. I mean, I did all of that for free. The only, the only thing that I have invested in this site is, you know, the time to post the articles and then the money spent, which you can do a dollar a day if you want to. Right. But, you know, it doesn't have to be about the Air Force Base. I mean, what, think about things in your community. I mean, think about, you know, think about events. You know, put together a site on Facebook that just is about a community. Say you live in, you know, Settlers Walk community. We'll tell you. Tell the people of Settlers Walk what's going on in Settlers Walk. You know, there's there's a there's a bike parade. You know, just and then you can advertise just to people in Settlers Walk or in the Springboro community. And I know those are my communities, so that won't make a lot of sense to, to most of the listeners. But <laughs> you get the gist. Yeah, for sure. Well, look, you know, if if I was if you hired me as your consultant and I and I went to find Dayton, Ohio homes, I would tell you you're you're all over the map. Right. I would say because you have uh, looking for investment property, uh, Dayton short sales, Dayton foreclosures. If you're a first time home buyer, and then I see this, I see this, uh, this military piece, you know, I'll be like, you know, you, you know, let's, let's niche down a little bit, Mike. Um, what, yeah. w- w- uh, you know, I know you're new, right? You're six months in, but you're murdering it. That's why yeah. you're on the show, you know, putting eight to 10 uh, listings up per month. I mean, that's incredible. Why, like, where are you going to get to? Because you have to, you, you, got, you are going to specialize. Um, why haven't you yeah. now? Or so far, you know, I, I get the idea of, of wanting to be in a niche market. I, I understand it. It makes it makes sense conceptually, but the reality of it is, why put all your eggs in one basket? I mean, I've got a marketplace that's completely untapped, and people aren't willing to go out and do the work that I'm willing to do. So why not go out and take money from you know the luxury market? Go out and take money from you know, the condo market. You see what I'm getting at? Well, no, I hear what you're saying, but, but right, if I'm going to play devil's advocate, you said it was untapped. Okay, so it, through using that mindset, it's untapped, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the shotgun approach instead of the sniper approach. But why not, then, if it's untapped and, and people are not willing to do the work, I would go right up to the seven-figure homes and the, the full-on luxury market, and that's where I'd spend, that's where I would tap that, bed, you know, this, that area. Yeah, I, I, I get your point, and, and just so you know, that, that, that luxury market, it is almost, well, it's almost non-existent in, in our area, but I see where you're going with this. Um, to specialize in one area, I think for me, because I really don't, and, and this is probably, I'm going to get slapped on the hand for saying this, I don't really work a lot with my sphere of influence, um, and I know a lot of agents, I know a lot of agents do that, uh, and then that is something that I'm looking into, but most of this business, just so you know, is just has been developed off prospecting. So, and I've sold, I, you know, I have a license to do it and I can sell them and the properties are selling. So it's like, you know, talk me out of why not, why I shouldn't do it. it it's like, I can sell condos. I can sell commercial buildings. I can, I can really do it all. And if people are buying into what I'm telling them and they believe that I can do that, then I'm going to do it. Right. But, but so, but for, and, and I, I mean, I, maybe I'm taking this, uh, this call the wrong way, but I just, I'm fascinated by what you've done. So I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to pick it apart a little bit. So, but look, every kind of, uh, every, uh, every, um, investment buyer, uh, short sale, foreclosure, luxury market, commercial, all those, all of those different buckets have different gestation periods, right? Some are faster Absolutely. than others. So there's a gestation period, and then there's there is a different uh, ROI. There's a different payback on those different buckets. So again, sure. it, 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 taking your taking your consultants hat, how come you didn't sort of look at all those, you know, figure out the gestation times or the you know the the timeline to to close or or, or time to sell, whatever, um, and 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 optimize that and go this channel is going to be the best channel for me. You know what? That's a great point, and I think that's. That's honestly, I've been thinking a lot about this as, as my business grows and moves forward. And I probably will start to um, have more standards in, with regard to who I'm willing to work with. Right. But the reality of it is I did not have the luxury 
uh, of being able to do that. Uh, I wanted to, and I had the time to sit down and make these phone calls. And if I found somebody that was willing to list their home with me, it really didn't matter, you know, what it was as I, as I, you know, as I tried to grow and get better into the business. Now, I think you're absolutely right because a lot of the people you talk to in this industry, they do have a niche or they, you know, they have standards with regard to who they'll work with. But I don't think, I think to your point is I didn't have the luxury of being able to do that. I, I wanted to go out and learn. I wanted to go out and grow as fast as I could. And I think even if I go work with a $50,000 buyer, I'm still going to learn something from them in that transaction, just as if I would, you know, work with, with a $500,000 buyer. So right. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes, that sense. makes sense. It does make sense. So let's go back. So, so you have, um, so you are eight to 10. It's, it's an appointment. You're prospecting. Um, how many calls are you getting out in that, in those two hours? Um, how many calls? Probably close to 60 or 70 calls every morning. And using an auto dialer or no? I am not using an auto dialer, but I have actually looked into Mojo and, and am seriously considering it. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you can just gain more ground in, in those two hours. Um, so, you, sure. so, so you're, you're setting appointments on a typical day, Mike, out of 60 phone calls. Um, how many, how many calls does it make for you to get an appointment? Let me ask that. I'd say I'm probably setting one to two appointments just out of that, that session every day. A day. That is awesome. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so do, and are you just using a plain old dumb Mike Ferry script or are you, do you have something on your own? Uh, that I think is, is the foundation of my script, you know, so I might call somebody and I say, hi, this is Mike wall with iron gate realtors. I noticed your home was no longer being marketed through the MLS this morning. And I was just curious if the home had been sold and, you know, they tell me, Oh no, I didn't, we didn't know it was expired or, you yeah, had expired, and, and then, you know, I just go into the basic Mike Ferry script. Well, that's great. So why were you selling the property? And, you know, they start telling me, you know, their realtor was terrible. And I, you know, say, do you know what, what I do to, to help people just like you get their home sold? And, no, I don't. Well, let me set an appointment to come out and talk to you for 10 or 15 minutes. Let's talk about it. And, and what if they say, hey, look, you know, this week's not good? Uh, if they say this week's not good, I, I, I say, well, tell me what, what, what day works for you. You know, is it, how about, you know, next Tuesday? And, you know, what I'll do at that point, Toby, is I will take their, their information. I will schedule a time to follow up with them on Tuesday. I will get a handwritten thank you note and write it out to them with my business card in it. I'll get in my car and drive it over to their front door and knock on their door and put it in their hand. Wow. Wow, man. That is full service. At what at what point do you get their their email address and and, and put them on a, a drip campaign? Immediately. So that that is that is critical. Um, yep. And I use Top Producer as a CRM, uh, and that is that is really a, a critical piece for me. And I didn't have that early on, and I'm so glad I do now because it's not that you can you know log it and forget it, but it is the fact that you continue to to uh, to touch base with this person and provide some sort of a value. Um, while you're waiting to follow up. And I think that's crucial because, you know, right now I think um, the way I have everything set up is I'm getting probably five to seven leads um, every single day now. And that's through my house value site on Facebook and that buyer, that Wright Patterson Air Force Base site. And then um, I do some, uh, I do a, a site called Dayton, Ohio foreclosures, which is a really cool site too. Um, that basically just lists out, um, the hottest foreclosure deals, which I scrub every single day, uh, post them on Facebook, and you can see that that site is really gaining some traction. It has almost two thousand um, likes, two thousand people that follow the page. Yeah, so I mean, it's, wow. it's super cool. You did that in six months. Oh, I did that in less than six months because I started that at the end of February. Did you did you buy those likes? No, I advertise those properties so. What I do is I, oh. I, take, I take the property. I'll go through the – I use the Find Date in Ohio Homes website, okay, that you were on uh, just a minute ago. And what I'll do is I'll use that site to find a foreclosure listing. So I find a, a very good foreclosure listing that was maybe just listed the day before. I take it back to the Dayton, Ohio foreclosure site, post it on there, and then what happens is I advertise that site. So I, I have – 
I, I actually only have a five dollar a day budget on that site, and I end up getting somewhere between uh, eleven and fifteen likes a day on that site. And what the what, what happens is the link from the picture on that site actually is driven back to my Find Dayton Ohio Homes dot com site, and when they go into that site, their their information is captured. And if you want to get real deep, uh, what I do at that point is. Once they register, I have everything set up through a company called Five Street hmm. so that the lead, when it comes into my Gmail account, goes into Five Street where they scrub it for, you know, social media information. And then, so, and then um, they send out an automatic uh, text message if, if it's a mobile phone and then a, an email with some valuable information about if they want additional information on foreclosures, I can provide that as well. So. They're, they're hit immediately with a text message, immediately with an email, and then I'll call them within five minutes. Uh, if I can get a hold of them, I'll leave them a message if not. And then, and then they go into Top Producer immediately, and they're immediately put on a drip campaign. I'm sorry. So I, I've never heard of Five Street. I'm looking at them right now. Um, um, I, I, My favorite new tool by far and away. My favorite new tool. It is unbelievably cool. So did you say that they they will let's see to make online leads and phone leads how do you get the the phone number will they find it for you No 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 they they enter the information in as they come in through the site so it's prompted just like if you go in through a tiger lead site or anything like that once you start viewing the pictures you're prompted to give your information so you get email phone number name and then oh, that I comes in through okay. Yeah okay I missed that piece um, I was I was uh, was trying to digest all the other stuff you're saying. That's that's good stuff, man. That is good stuff. Um, in ter- I'll tell you what. You know, in terms of your, uh, I, I'm going to tell you something, and uh, I'll let you work it out. And dude, you should work this out. Here's what I've been thinking about doing. Right, I've been thinking about creating for for all you guys. And you know, so you're calling uh, expires or fizzbos, right? So you put them on a drip email campaign. I don't. I, I would like to know what that looks like because this is what I've been thinking about about creating, right? So l- if we talk about expires, I want to create, you know, like a 14 day email sequence, you know, and and that sequence, right? It's a it's a, at 14 days every day they get an email from you with with this template, and it's and that is, you know, that's gonna you're gonna tell them how you're gonna educate them on how you're going to do something different than the other guy did to get their home sold. Yeah. Right. You know, so I want to do an, uh, an expired sequence, uh, a FISBO sequence, um, you know, a, uh, you know, a pre-appointment sequence. Uh, you know, there's so many sequences that, that you can do. And if you have these and you use a top producer or you could, you know, even if you use an Aweber, you know, put them in there and just, and just, and just drip them out. I think that'd be in terms of conversion. I think that'd be so powerful. Yeah, and, and think about it this way. How much more powerful would it be if you sent it over in video format using BombBomb? Oh, totally. I didn't want, you know, I didn't want, you're, you're right. I, that was actually the secret sauce that I, <laughs> that I was saving. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, my friend. You got it. You got it. You're, you're, look, I mean, you're, you're a smart guy. Um, so that's, that, that is cool. I mean, look, um, talk, look, give us a list of tools you're using, right? Five Street. I didn't know about it, but I know I know the other ones. What what are some of the the tools that you use that that again, six months in the business and eight to ten you know, deals a month? Yeah, so I, I think that um, the, the, like I said, the foundation really was Red X or a company um, you know like uh, Leads Today or uh, you had mentioned. Uh, well, there's so many of them really. Uh, you you could use, but. Um, that's really the foundation of how you get started because you want to know who to call. You don't really need anything else until you start developing your leads. So that's the easiest, the quickest, the most cost-efficient way to, to start developing business is to implement one of those programs. So Red X was the first thing I did. Um, I think the second thing I did, well, obviously, was start leveraging uh, Facebook. Uh, I had seen some videos on how to develop business on Facebook, you know, using home value leads and um, and then just creating some value sites and the go sites. So I did that. I think that's money well spent, uh, seeing a really good return on that. Uh, and then what I did, I took a real big leap of faith here uh, because, uh, you know, you're looking at, 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 at a much higher cost per lead or when you, when you implement something like Tiger Leads or Boomtown. But I did hire uh, Tiger Leads. But I'll tell you one thing that uh, especially the agents who are scared of implementing something that's, you know, maybe $1,300 a month, Uh, is leverage your relationships with your vendors, okay? Because what I've done is I I took 
my idea of Tiger Leads and I leveraged a title company, I leveraged a lender, and now I've got him footing most of the bill for that. So How? Uh, you, you have to help them understand the ROI. In other words, you have to develop a business plan. You, you have to say, okay, and, and by doing that, you have to do your research. So you have to know, you have to get with Tiger Leads, obviously, and you have to know, okay, what they provide. And then what you might want to do, and what I did, is talk to some other people that were on the Tiger Leads program and then the type of ROI they spent. And then get a testimony from them. Take it to, you know, take it to whatever lender you use. Take it to whatever title company you use and see if they're willing to get on board with you. And if they are, great, you know. At, at some point, they should be paying the whole thing is what I believe because, you know, you're doing all the work and they're getting all the reward with regard to, um, you know, they, you hand them over a lead, you know, especially a title yeah. company. It's, it's just you're handing them over a closing. Yeah. Um, and, a, you know, a lender, a, a lender and, and then a realtor, obviously, we do a little bit more work because we have to go out and find or sell them a home. And, um, and then a lender, you know, obviously has to do all the, the financing with regard to the underwriting and so forth. But, you know, the reality of it is leverage your relationship. I think it's super important. And most of these people uh, will be willing to work with you. Well, so look, and by the way, so uh, the, I've had the, the founder and CEO, Howard Ta- Tagger of Tiger Leads. I've had him on the show. Tagger. Tagger. I haven't released the episode, but it's a good episode. Um, um, so... Yeah, but uh, so, uh, so unpack that, Mike. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm gonna do the math. I'm gonna get a testimony, and I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna go to my lender. I'm gonna go to my title person and say, "Listen, I'm gonna implement Tiger Leads. I want to bring, uh, you know, I, I have a relationship with you. And look, you you could not have had that deep of a relationship in six months. So, so they're really, you know, if they're gonna sponsor you, <laughs> right? Um, sure. Um, uh, you know, they're taking a leap of faith. You're absolutely right, but so are you, and. The reality of it is with, with uh, the lender that I used, he's actually my roommate from college, so ah. it was an easy buy-in for him. Now, the title company, a uh, whole different story altogether. You know, she was concerned initially about rest of the law, uh, which we were finally able to overcome, uh, and, and that is, just so everyone knows, uh, not an issue. They've actually been, uh, Tiger Leads has been audited three or four different times and, and, uh, and, and one on all accounts, so... I, I basically, and, and the, the title uh, person that I work with um, is just a fair, she's a very friendly lady. She's an older lady. And, you know, I think she just, based on the information that I put together in my business plan, she, she kind of took a leap of faith too. And there's a little bit of that there, Toby. I, I have to be honest with you. There has to be a little bit of leap of faith uh, from both of your vendors too. But, you know, if you approach it with passion, if, you, if you're confident in what you do, and if you do the research, if you talk to other people who, have uh, leveraged relationships before. Use me. You know, I'm. I'm. You can use me to leverage relationships. Uh, I'm a working testament to the fact that it does work. Um, and if you're passionate about, you know, about, about your approach to, to that person or that individual, it, it it's not going to fail. And, and if it does, go to the next person. I mean, right. gosh, how many title reps are in your are, are in your community? Right. 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 Um, and so, look. You know what? Here's a, here's the deal. So. Uh, you know, this show, right, you know, this building this show is I can build this show, do my thing and maybe no, but not that many people listen to it, <clears throat> you know, but I had to be smart in terms of building a show and gaining audience. And, you know, I was able to do it because of my background, right? I'm a deal guy. I know how to do, you know, partnerships. I know how to build relationships, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> now you are too, right? That's like you, again, you're a smart guy. You, you, you know, you, you, you were a consultant. So you doing some of this stuff was was in your blood, right? You've done it for, you know, for a while. Again, I go back and here's what I'm leading up to. I'm going back to, you know, outgunning your competition, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, could somebody, you know, uh, you know, a a 25 year old person without your background, I mean, how hard are are, are they, how hard of a time are they going to have to try to model what you've done and to get your, your kind of, you know, 10 deals a month out of the gate? Sure, sure. That's a great question. Before I answer that, though, I, I will just speak to this because I can't believe that you even still have a coaching spot open with as much knowledge as you probably gained from having all of these conversations. So don't get that, but we'll move on. I digress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get it either, man. And I'll, look, I'll tell you this. I, I, I don't get it. And I, I only take on four people. And um, um, I don't get it either. 
uh, number one. Number two, you know, I'm doing this live event, right? It's, a, it's 150 bucks, and we're going to put 10 people in a room, you know, the third week of July, and we're going to mastermind all day. We're, I mean, this is going to be like a giant coaching session. And uh, I don't know if you heard Chadi Bazi. Chadi Bazi, uh, you know, he said, hey, man, maybe I'll show up and help you out. This other guy, Sharon Stravatsa, super duper smart guy. He's like, dude, if you need me to be there, like as backup, I'm there. And this guy runs a 300 person brokerage. Even with that, people are not willing to, to part with 150 bucks to come and spend a day learning. It's incredible <laughs> to me. I mean, I have literally, I have, you know, hold on. I have like, goes back to your point. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, I was going to say, I have what? one guy, I have one guy that has sent me a couple emails is like, hey, or maybe two, hey, I'm really interested in coming. But I mean, I thought, I'm not charging 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. You know, I'm just, I'm charging enough to rent the room and to buy food, right? I'm, that's not, that's not a money making thing for me. So, uh, so, yeah. uh, you know, this, go, this really gets into like the psychographic of, of, a, of an agent, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, no, it, it is. It, that's back to your point though, that a lot of real estate agents, they, and it, you know what, Toby? It's always going to be that way. It's in that way in every industry. It's the it's the Pareto principle, the eighty twenty rule, whatever you want to call it. But it, it eighty percent of the people will will just not do what it takes to be successful. But you know, a lot of the people that listen to your show are, are taking the first step in being successful. And you know, that's back to your uh, original question of okay, if I'm a twenty five year old and uh, I decide that you know I want to be in real estate, this is what I want to do. And, and I and by the way, I think that. Um, uh, I think that's the first step in becoming successful is, is making a decision or being curious, I'm sorry, about, uh, about having a better life and about what you can do to get there. And then, you know, the next step being, you know, making that decision to take action. And I think the, the good thing about a 25 year old is, you know, they haven't learned or developed a lot of bad habits so they can get into an industry like real estate and, uh, if they don't have a lot of fear, they can be successful right away. Gosh, you've talked to real estate agents before who were in their 20s and that are successful. I've heard it on, on other shows as well. It, those people that made the decision to get into real estate and decided that they were going to be successful, it didn't matter how old they are. They're all successful because they made a decision and they took action. That's yeah, it. That's it. That's it. And, and, you know, and they try and and, and again, it kind of goes back to to something you said earlier. You know, they tried different things. It reminds me of a very early interview I did. Patrick Ginn. Patrick's 32 years old. And uh, and I actually did the interview last year. That was it was late 2013 when I did it. But uh, so he, he did he did uh, you know, 32 million. He was 32 and, and did 32. And he was and he was the same thing. So he was, I think, like fourth year in the business. But he just came out guns blazing. Right. Um, young. Wanted to do the work. I wasn't scared to to try something new, and it was weird. His business was um, uh, he's he's like in uh, up north somewhere, like Oregon or Washington or something. Uh, he had a big uh, he he got he, um, new home construction was a big piece of his business, which is kind of interesting. Sure, yeah, that's great. I mean, it, it, it's like it's like you said, it's and it sounds so cliche at this point. Uh, I think because people are used to hearing it over and over and over again, but. It truly works. People just have to believe that. They have to implement, uh, and, and, and they have to be passionate about what they do. You talk so much about knowing your why, and, yeah. and it truly is. It, 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 it is the basis of, of my business and why I get up every day and why I do the things that I do. It's because that I know my why. And if you don't know your why, I suggest that you find out what your why is so that you can be passionate about something in life. Yeah. So look, so, so, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about, you know, the, I mean, uh, taking action. So people, you know, we, we're kind of beating it into them like, Hey, you're junky cause you don't take action. Right. You're never going to win. Cause you don't. So, uh, you know, maybe they don't know what to do. I mean, so maybe give us some steps, like what, you know, somebody's out there and they're like, you know, that's it. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it today. Or tomorrow. Sure. <laughs> right? that, and that's look, Absolutely. That's the first thing. They're going to, oh, I'm so stoked. I'm going to do it. But I'll do it tomorrow. And then you know what? That drive, that thing, that, that fire that got built up in you, like is completely dissipated. So if you're, gonna, if you're out there and you're going to take action and do something, Mike's going to tell us kind of the first steps. Do it today. Today. Make some forward movement today. Mike, what? Do it right now. Right do it now. as soon as you get off the off this podcast. So what, what, I mean, talk to us about some of the steps that, that people should, should start with. I, I think that most importantly, uh, and as I 
as I keep harping on this, but, you know, picking up the phone, getting out, building relationships, um, educating yourself. There's so much free content. I mean, your show is fantastic for, for agents at any level, but there's videos on YouTube. There, you can look at listing presentations from Mike Ferry. You can look at buyer presentations. You can look at, uh, at, at, at technology shows as it relates to real estate. And, and really, it, it's a little overwhelming, and I have to tell you this. One of the mistakes that I did make and that agents shouldn't make while they're doing that is over-implementing systems in their business. You should take the time to learn everything that you implement before or each thing that you implement before you implement something else. And what I was doing at one point is I was just implement, I would hear something on, on your show and I would implement it immediately. And then I would listen next week and I would implement something else. And I wasn't fully taking advantage of, of what I was implementing. So I had to kind of put the brakes on a little bit um, and, and go back to, you know, some of the things I had implemented earlier on and, and start learning those things so that I could fully utilize those to help grow my business. Yeah, and I think I think one of the other things too is, and, and I see this a lot, you know, people listen to my show or people, and people start to put together lists, right? They're like, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that's a good idea. And all of a sudden they have this giant list and they're totally overwhelmed. They're like, oh, I'm not sure to do. And, you know, one thing with my coaching clients, you know, I've, I've gotten away from that list building thing and I'm like, listen, we're going to focus just on three things this week. Three things, whether that's sure. a client or a legion channel, or, or or you know a prospecting type, whatever it is, just three things, and 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 you know do those for a week. We reevaluate at the end of the week, and we either you know keep going or mix it up a little bit. Um, but again, so if somebody's going to implement three things, right, or start off with three things, okay, you said prospecting. Okay, so let's, let's that, that being number one. That being number one, let's determine a type, right? Because because you can have uh, so. There is, in my mind, Mike, right, there's active prospecting and there's passive prospecting. Mm -hmm. Now, now mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk about the passive stuff in a second or, or right now and then to get that. So passive is all the stuff that is that where people can see that you're in real estate, right? That's that's car magnets. That's stupid stuff like you wearing, a, you know, a, 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 a name tag, right? Nobody wants to wear a name tag. But you know what? If you go into the same grocery store every day and you wear a name tag and you and you are presenting yourself as a realtor, you know, uh, who knows what opportunities are going to pop up from that, <laughs> you know? So, so, sure. so you have to do that past stuff and the active stuff, right? There, so, so I'll let you, I don't want, I'm not being interviewed. So you tell it, what, what are some of those active prospecting types? And, uh, and let's break those down a sec for a little bit. So active uh, would be anything relationship based. So any means or method, which you could go out and develop a relationship. I don't care if it's, uh, prospecting uh, via the phone, email, yep. Yep. Uh, text message, um, which are less personal, by the way. But, in, you know, face-to-face, -face, if you're in a networking group, join the Chamber of Commerce in your city, go out and volunteer, build relationships, let people know what you do. You have to go out and you have to, people, you have to let people know what you do. If, if they don't know what you do, then they don't know to give you any business. But you don't even have to <laughs> approach these relationships with, uh, you know, can I sell you a home? It's, hey, you know, my name's Mike Wall. I'm a real estate agent. I work here locally in the community. Um, should you ever know anybody that's looking to buy or sell real estate, I, I would be happy to help out. And, you know, maybe that conversation comes at the end. Maybe it's just an initial conversation if you're, if you're scared to, to do that. Of, hey, I'm Mike Wall. I'm a real estate agent here locally. I'm just down here to volunteer or do some work. Uh, you know, let me know what I can do. Um, but people, as you know, as you go out and build relationships and as you put these people into your pipeline and, 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 you nurture those those relationships, your business will just snowball. Your business should be like at some point pushing a, a giant or a small snowball down a hill uh, as it gets bigger and gains momentum. That's what your business should look like. Um, and then, you know, eventually you won't have to work as hard as you did up front in building all those relationships because you have this enormous pipeline now that you can just, you know, you can you can nurture and provide value and, and they will look to you as a trusted advisor. I agree. And look, here, here's, here's how I express that. And we, we have to start wrapping up here in a bit, but here's how I express it, right? It, it, no matter what, when you're building a company in any industry, 
you are pushing, 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 pushing. And if you do all the right stuff, your marketing, your, your prospecting, all that stuff, you get to a point where you reach equilibrium, right? You're not pushing any, anymore, but you're just sort of running alongside it. You know, the business, you're, you're, it's, just, it's just growing with you. And then you get to a point where the business actually is pulling you, right? The business is outgrowing you or your time constraints. And that's when you have to go start hiring a team. Most people <clears throat> believe that building a business is push, 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 and they never do that stuff, the marketing or, you know, all the, all the stuff that, that is what a business is. And, they're, and you know what? They're pushing for years. They never even reach equilibrium, much less get to the point where the business is pulling them along. <clears throat> so, so, and I'll tell you this. So in terms of acting, act, active prospecting, here is my, here is my personal opinion. Uh, you know, you could door knock, you can do outbound calls, chamber of commerce, all that stuff you just mentioned. But I would say this, th you know, tr tr try three things, right? Try the expireds in your market. It's not, expireds and FISBOs are not in every market, right? I mean, the, the, the nation is very mixed up. <clears throat> but it, it, everywhere, you can go and identify a farm. You can go to Land Voice Data, even Red X, get the phone numbers within that farm and start banging out calls. I love outbound calls because, because in two hours, you can make 60 or 70. <clears throat> right now, they're a little bit harder to convert or, or to get an appointment than if you are on their doorstep talking with them. But you can cover so much ground. So, so that's what – if anybody out there is like, well, what do I – you know, that's what I would say do. I, I would – pick up the phone and do outbound calls and because you can, if you get used to that if you get good at that you can do it that, that anytime anywhere you, let's say you get to an appointment and your pro, your the person you're meeting is late you know you you have 15 minutes how many calls can you make in 15 minutes right so exactly get good at that because because it will it will pay off Anyhow, man, uh, Mike, I look. I didn't. I didn't think. Um, I didn't have high expectations for this, just because. Again, you are a new guy. So, but I do appreciate sure. you reaching out to me, and I think this has been super duper valuable. I definitely want to keep tabs on you. Um, tabs on you as you grow, and I've always sort of had this idea of of. Uh, I I wish I would have met you, man. Um, I wish I would have met you six months ago, right when you were getting licensed, because <laughs> because you know I, I kind of have wanted to find somebody who's getting licensed, and uh, and follow their progress. Um, and now I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a hundred emails right now um, with people <laughs> saying I, that's me, that's me. But anyhow, um, look, I'm really happy for success. Um, uh, he, you, you know the questions. Here's our last question. Um, I'm an aspiring agent. I have twenty five bucks. What book should I go buy today? a great question and I do have an answer for you and it is a very good read it's called The Fred Factor by Mark Sanborn the forward is written by John C Maxwell and it is let's see, it's probably I, I'm guessing it's probably 100 pages interesting um uh, hold on I'm looking that up right now Fred I, that's, I've never heard that are you just trying to get tricky and, and say a book that nobody else has said <laughs> No, it is an incredible book, and it will it will uh, it, it will teach you a, a lot about uh, about about having passion in your work, and and it'll do so in a very short. There's not much of a time investment. Yeah, the Fred Factor: How Passion in Your Work and Life Can Turn the Ordinary into the Extraordinary. Mark Sanborn. Uh, yeah, look, uh, if anybody, you know, if you want to get a free copy, use our link audibletrial.com slash superagentslive, um, and listen to that. Hey, uh, Mike, dude, thanks for coming on, man. No worries. I'll give you one parting shot, okay? That gets, for that, for agents. Good. Yep. For agents who are looking to be successful, reinvest in your business. I cannot stress this enough. You know, I drive a Honda Accord right now. I could go out and buy uh, an 8 Series BMW, and, I, and I'm choosing not to do that. Reinvest this money in your business. It will grow so much faster. I know. I totally agree. But you know what, man? That that nine eleven or that Beamer, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I drive, dude. I have a, I have a, I have a, uh, I have a, um, I, I, I'm a big Porsche guy. I don't know. I don't know if I talked about it on the show, but but uh, so my wife has a Cayenne. I have a, I have a nine eleven C four S, um, and I very nice. I have a nine four four S race car, right? Full race suspension, roll bar, the whole bit. So so that very nice. It's kind of what I do on the weekends. Um. Not so much anymore. Anyhow, hey Mike, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you want to take any any emails or answer any questions, so you can tell people where they can find you or not. It's up to you. I, I don't. I don't want you to get. Uh, you know, I know you're trying to build your business, sure. so it's up to you. 
You can uh, you can uh, you can find me on Twitter at Dayton underscore Realtor, or my email, which is Mike Wall M I K E W A L L at find F I N B is in dog Dayton Ohio Home dot com. Very cool, man. Yeah. Hey, look, everybody. Go say thank you to Mike uh, for coming on the show at on Twitter. That's the easiest way. All right. Hey, buddy, let's sign off. Let's keep in touch. All right. See you, man. Thanks, man. Hey, Mike. Yep. That was How did you feel about it? Skill. 15% concentrated power of